We're beginning a series, our Advent series of messages all the way through the new year. And one of the ways that we're going to start out these messages is we're going to take the theme, if you can follow me on this, we're going to take the theme of the message, and today it's hope. And we're going to draw from the Elf movie. How many of you have seen the Elf movie? And how many of you know what a deep, theologically profound story that is? Well, I don't know about that. But it's a lot of fun, and it gives a lot of smiles. And what you're going to find is that in these clips, these themes are there, but they're so limited because they're people that don't really know. They're not sad things, but it's going to be saying something about hope. See if you can catch it. It's a quick clip. And the theme is hope, but what I know is that the hope they have is so limited compared to what we have, the real hope in Jesus Christ. And so this is partly just for fun for the Christmas season. Why don't you go ahead and play that video? Bye, guys. Bye, buddy. Bye, buddy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Thanks, Mr. Narwhal. Bye. his hope to find his dad. Now, I thought I had seen the whole movie, and I don't remember that scene, so I must have missed something. <laughs> well, we're going to hear this morning about a much greater hope that we have that has come to us from God, the real hope in Jesus Christ. Let's welcome Mark and Louise Schmidt. They're going to share the word this morning as they come. Thank you, Pastor Nathan. Well, how do we follow Elf? I don't know. I could have you look at the verse that talks about the Norwal, but I'm not aware of one. So, <laughs> when we were asked, when I was asked to uh, speak on the first message of Advent, um, I really felt like I should have my partner, my best friend, with me. So this is a new one, what we haven't done here, speaking together. So I'm gonna, we're going to be looking at Advent, and I had to really look it up, because I grew up in church, but we didn't have the tradition of Advent. And when I went to look for the Bible verse, I couldn't find anything in the Bible that contains the word Advent. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe you can show it to me. So we looked it up, and we did some research on it, and in the New Oxford Dictionary, it says that the, the word Advent comes from the Latin, and it means the arrival, the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. I thought that was a good definition. So our Advent is the celebration of the arrival of a notable person and a notable event. And the first week of Advent, which this is, is supposed to be the week the subject is hope. So I had to look up hope wasn't one of my strong Bible topics. But I've come to know hope as the, uh, I'm drawing a blank. It's celebrating a future event. It is a, it is a future expectation of good things. That's, that's the hope, future expectation. Now the world, in English, in our culture, they has changed the word, because originally it did mean that in English, and you'll see some references in the English literature about the, the hope but now we, we tend to think of it as a, a, long, a long shot. I hope I win the lottery. It's always about a long shot thing. But in the Bible, it is not. It is the future expectation of a certain, of a certain thing, something that is certain, something that will happen. A living reality of something that's ahead of us. So as in thinking about the Christmas story and researching, and researching Advent, it was interesting to me that shows that the, the Advent message, the idea 
uh, goes back as far as the third century. But it had different meanings all through time. And to my surprise, it wasn't just talking about the birth of Jesus. It was also talking about, originally it was talking about the, the second coming of Jesus as well. So it is the coming, is the hope of a future coming of Jesus. So it covers both the incarnation, the Jesus being born, and also the second coming. And in thinking about this, it, it opened my mind to um, what, what we see in the Christmas story in, uh, in Luke, for instance, chapter 2. And I'm, for the sake of time, I'm not going to open it up and you don't have to read it. I will just quote it to you like Linus did. Where it says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Now here's the message of hope. What hope deals with. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. The message of hope was fear not, peace and goodwill are the favor of God to men. This is hope. This is the message of hope. Is what God is doing and has foreshadowed, has shown ahead of time. So we see that as the hope that we have. Also, I was reminded of um, Isaiah 9, 6. And I think that one's going to go up on the screen at some point. There it is. And this one I've always related. I've always heard it at Christmas time. But there's more to it than that. Now again, this is Isaiah the prophet speaking 400 plus years before Jesus was born. So it is looking forward. So it is hope. Hope looks forward. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Now I want, what I want you to see in this, again, hope being declared before it's not just about Christmas. We see the first part, for unto us a child is born. We can relate that to the Christmas story. But the second part, unto us a son is giving. In my mind, that's a foreshadowing or hope given, a message given of Jesus being the son given. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave. That part is talking about Jesus dying for our sins, the res crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. And the next part, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. That to me is fulfilled more in the second coming, when Jesus comes, when the King comes again. And we will see him in those positions. The government on his shoulder. King of kings, forever and ever. I, I, as I was studying this, I was thinking about the Hallelujah Chorus and the Handel's Messiah. King of kings forever and ever and Lord of lords forever. He shall reign forever and ever. And that's what the second coming will show us. We'll, we'll see that. So the hope is a picture of what God has set before them. And Isaiah is showing them a picture of the birth, a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and a picture of what's coming in the second coming. It is a future expectation of good things. For God's people. You have a different definition of hope. As I was studying and reading about all the different verses of hope, hope is so significant. And I never realized that before. It's listed, it's accounted 167 times in the Bible. That's significant. And so I started thinking and meditating and praying and reading all the scriptures of hope, and hope started rising in my heart. And so I came up with a de definition of hope that kind of encapsulated all the verses that I read. 
So hope is an assured, confident, immovable, unshakable guarantee, expectation of a future good or a promise fulfilled. Now, doesn't that excite you? Doesn't that encourage you? That's our God. That's who our God is. We are children of the Most High God. And so as I started reading that, I got excited. And in 1 Peter 1, 3, the Bible says, In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We have a living hope. It's not dead. It's not a hopeful, maybe someday off in the future, maybe it'll come to pass. No, this is our hope. It is a living and internal hope in the person of Jesus Christ. So we have this living hope. It's different than the world's definition of hope. In Hebrews 6.19, this hope talking about Jesus, talking about the hope that we have as a child of God, the living hope in the person of Jesus Christ. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Our hope is the source of stability. It's a source of strength. It's a source of security. But it's not just in the anger it's in the hope it's in the word of god and it's in god the father god the son jesus christ and holy spirit so that's what we put our hope in it is firm it is secure it is stable and we can really rejoice in that and be so thankful that the storms of life are going to come and I love what Emily shared. The storms of life, they're going to come. But if our anchor, our hope, is sure and secure and firm, we're going to stay firm. We're not going to be moved. We're going to be stable and fixed. In Psalm 91, the Holy Spirit just reminded me that we can be stable and fixed in the shadow of the Almighty. No matter what storms are coming in our life, we can be stable. We can be fixed. We can be hopeful. We can be expecting good things. Now, another part of this verse that I never really saw before it says that it leads us into the curtain, into God's inner sanctuary. Some verses say behind the veil. Hope leads us into the presence of God. When we go before God, we can have hope that he is there. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is there to love us to listen to our prayers, to listen to our cries, to listen to our heart's desires that aren't fulfilled yet. He is there, and that's the hope that we have. When we are in his presence, there is fullness of joy. There is peace, and we can experience that when we hang on to the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In praying about this, I also saw hope. I was thinking about the Christmas story. We have Joseph. He's betrothed to be Mary, to marry Mary. He's older. Most historians tell us he's a bunch older than she is. So all this time, he's, he knows he's going to marry her. It's probably an arranged marriage. And he's waiting for the time when she reaches of age, reaches the age when they can actually be married and then the word says that Mary came to him and said told him she was with child which in my mind putting myself in her shoes that would be like being kicked in the stomach after waiting all this time for someone that's supposed to be your wife find out she's with child from somebody else and then she tells him but she, doesn't, she wasn't with a man this child was conceived by the Holy Spirit 
Now, this is a, that's a different kind of hit. That's like being hit over the head with something, in my mind. A stunning revelation. And then he has to make a choice. Do I believe she has been unfaithful and lived with somebody else, or do I believe that the miraculous has happened, which there was no, no precedent for before this. And the word says he was, he was a good man, but he was going to put her away quietly. He didn't want to shame her. And he didn't want her stoned, which could have happened in that culture. So now he's in a place, a pretty low place. And then in Matthew chapter 1, it tells us about an angel appearing to Joseph and telling him she is carrying the child of God, the Son of God, the Messiah. And so now he's going from a low place to a place of hope because while he's hearing that, he's not seeing anything yet. The angel said, she will bear it. She will bring forth the son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, names are important with God. He, he, you know, he, he forms the character and nature of people, and he often uses their names to describe who they are. And that's why he changed the names of many people in the Bible. But Jesus, he says, you will call his name Jesus. The name Yeshua in the Hebrew means Jehovah is salvation. We are, you're going to call him Jehovah is salvation because he will save his people from their sins. And so we see hope rising up in Joseph. The hope is the good news. And again, the hope wasn't meant to just be had. It was meant to be shared, proclaimed. We see the proclamation of the angels. We see, we see this angel proclaiming the truth, proclaiming hope to them. We see Isaiah, God speaking through Isaiah, proclaiming hope to the nation of Israel that the Messiah would come and would be the king of kings. So hope is in the proclamation. In Romans, the 15th chapter, Paul, quoting Isaiah, says, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will, put, will hope in him. Now we see the entrance of hope for the Gentiles, for people who aren't God's people. And we'll see this theme over and over again in different verses that the hope was not just for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. So what happens when hope is proclaimed? When hope is proclaimed, you give hope to other people. When hope was proclaimed to the shepherds, they left the sheep and went to look for Jesus. When hope was proclaimed and revealed to the wise men, the, the magi, they came from afar to find the birth of this new king. Hope, proclaiming hope, gives hope. And this to me is critical. That is our job as people who have hope to proclaim the hope, to give it to other people. Colossians 1.23 says, to them, God has got, to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the riches, glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ, who we have in us, Jesus is that hope, is to be made known among the Gentiles. I found some very interesting verses in Isaiah. And we see in Isaiah, we see much of the proclaiming of the hope. We see uh, in Isaiah 53, he says, all we like sheep, talking to the people of Israel, all we like sheep have gone astray and have turned everyone to his own way, but the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. It's referring to the hope of the fact that the Messiah would be a shepherd and gathered up the sheep, and he would take the sins of the world and die in our place, die in my place. And he also proclaimed the hope when he said he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Painting the picture of the hope that Jesus would take our sins, and that healing would be available through him, because he paid for it with his blood. In Isaiah 53, 4 through 10, and I'm going to jump through some of the points that are in there, it says, this really jumped out at this weekend. It said, say to those who are fearful. Again, hope speaks to fear. 
angel said, fear not. Say to those who are fearful, he will come and save you. Hope deals with fear. In the next verse, it says, then the eyes of the blind are open. Our hope opens blind eyes, spiritually and physically. That same verse says, the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. Our hope, the one who is our hope, heals the deaf, opens the eyes of people who are blind, opens the ears of people who cannot hear. Next verse says, the lame will leap, leap like a deer. Our hope heals the sick. Our hope restores those who have been injured. That you can be bold in your faith by acts of kindness that you can do very quietly and you can do it in your personality. God wants to use you in your personality. He created you to show his glory. And so you can just do little acts of kindness. You can buy someone a cup of coffee. Um, you can hold open a door for someone. I want to share a testimony that the Holy Spirit reminded me of about this. Just a little act of kindness, but it really made a huge impact. I was in Aldi shopping, and I had a huge cart full of things. And the lines were really, really long. And I happened to glance over at a young girl who had her hands full of groceries, no cart, no bag. They looked like they were just going to fall at any minute. I mean, I know I've done that before. So my heart just kind of went out to her. And I said, hi, you know, I see that you're <laughs> really struggling there. I want you to go first. Please go in front of me because that will make it so much easier for you and you don't have to hold those for a really long time. And she was so surprised that I offered to do that for her. And then I said, would you like a shopping bag too? Because I just want to, I just want to help you. I just want to bless you. I want to make it easier for you right now. I see that you're struggling. She was so amazed that she was just like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it was just a small act of kindness. I didn't share the gospel. I didn't ask to pray with her. But when I got up to the checkout to pay for my groceries, she had bought me a gift card and told the cashier, give that to the lady behind me. I had already been really excited about blessing her and just being kind to her, but I didn't expect anything in return. I was just happy to do it. See, we don't realize just little things, how they affect people's lives. You don't know what kind of day she had. You don't know what she was going through. We need to plant seeds of hope. Someone's planting them. Someone's watering them. But it's God who gives the increase. And so I just want to encourage you to just pray and ask God what you can do. You can also pray bold prayers at home. You don't have to do it in front of anyone. You can pray bold prayers for your coworkers, for your unsaved family, for your neighbors, for your friends, for someone you just happen to meet at a store. Pray the word of God. Pray for laborers to come in their path. Pray that other people would share hope. We're all working together, and we need to be intentional. We need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Pay attention to the people around you. And I just throw up a quick prayer before I go into a store. God, who do you want me to talk to? Who do you want me to pray with? Who could I bless? Who could I be kind to? And just be intentional and be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And you will just be amazed um, how God will use you to give hope and to bring hope. So I am just excited that our testimonies give hope, bring hope. And so we have to be prepared. Oh, that's the scripture I was going to share. First Peter 3.15 says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks to give you the reason for the hope that you have. It's intentional. You have to be prepared. 
You have to think about it. Think of those testimonies. It could be something small, like God providing money to pay a bill, or just, you know, a neighbor stopping by with tomatoes, and that's exactly what you needed for your dinner, but you didn't have time to go get it. That is all giving glory to God. And those simple or funny stories, how God made a way for you, those can be shared and give hope. It's interesting how God will use people and God will use us. So we have stories to tell, testimonies of who he is and that he, the fact that he's still alive. When she was speaking, I, I thought of something that happened about a week ago. She asked me about buying a turkey for Thanksgiving. And I was tempted to buy one. <laughs> but I felt like I shouldn't. And I said, I think someone's just going to give us a turkey. I don't think we'll have to buy one. And not an hour later, less than an hour later, we get a text from, from uh, my middle daughter's boyfriend asking us if we wanted a turkey. And so he had, he'd won one somehow, and he didn't. I can't remember the details. He didn't need it, didn't want it, asked us if we wanted it, and we picked it up, I think, the next day. But God does things. What we have is a living testimony. The hope that we have is manifest in his birth. The hope that we have was manifest in his life, death, and resurrection. The hope that we have is him living in us now and doing things and, and showing himself real and alive today. And the hope we have is his second coming as well. Titus 2.13. I've been hearing this song all day, all morning long. This has been going through my head and yesterday, a song, but it's based on this verse. It says, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The blessed hope of him appearing. The blessed hope of the second coming. The blessed hope of him coming back in making all things new. In 1 Thessalonians 4.16, Paul's writing to the Thessalonians and says, uh, in that chapter he says, we are not like those who have no hope. We are not like them. We have this hope. And he goes on to say, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Part of the hope that we have is the him coming back and receiving us. Receiving us. Adoption is part of our hope. I was thinking back to the the clip. The last thing they said, Elf, hope you find your dad. Our hope is adoption. Where our dad has found us. He has adopted us. We have found father. Jesus said to the disciples, I'm going to my father and your father, my God and your God. So part of our hope is that we have been adopted into the family. I hope you find your dad. We have found our dad. This, he is our living hope. This is our living hope. It is what's before us. It is what's been declared and we heard and received it. It is what we've received and we carry on the inside of us. It is the person of Jesus and it is what we speak and we give hope to others. Back to that passage in Isaiah. If I can find it. It's right over here. There it is. Isaiah chapter 35. Say, speaking your hope, declaring your hope, say to the fearful hearted, he will save you. The eyes of the blind will, are open. The ears of the deaf will be unstopped. The lame will leap like a deer. The mute will shout for joy. And the redeemed of the Lord will come to Zion. And everlasting joy will be upon their head. This is our hope. This is what we share and we give to other people. This is who he is. And that's all. <laughs> Thank you, Mark and Louise. Why don't you stand with me? I want us to take a moment to respond to the Lord 
And he touched on some really important things. You know, you know when there's an absence of hope, when your heart is filled with fear, or you want to give up, and certainly hopelessness. People who are caught in hopelessness are usually by that time, they don't even realize how lost their heart has become. But fear and giving up on people and giving up on situations and giving up on the belief that there are good things ahead of you are the opposite of what the Lord wants you to have in your heart and mind. Not just in the Christmas season and Advent, but Advent is about what all of our faith is moving towards. We have a God who has adopted us, as Mark shared, and we can be overflowing the scripture that both Emily and Louise shared. We can be overflowing with joy and hope in God. This morning, why don't you just take a moment in the Lord's presence and lift to him any fear that has taken your heart, anything that has really gripped you in fear, whatever the situation might be or, or thing ahead of you, and, and just lift it to the Lord here this morning. Maybe you want to lift your hands or you just want to pray a silent prayer and you can pray out loud if you want to. But Lord, we lift up those things this morning, those things that have brought fear into our lives. And God, wherever there is an ounce of wanting to give up today in this place, Lord, would you take that away and replace it with faith in you, Jesus. Jesus, you showed us the way and your word is so clear that ultimately our hope that the hope-filled life and the life that is truly happy and filled with peace is not looking forward only to a situation or to an outcome, but a hope that is in a person and that is in you, Lord. And ultimately, God, it is you that we are looking for and that we are depending on. And so, Jesus, today we put our hope in you. Lord, as we enter into this Christmas season, there's a tendency, it's going to happen quick, Lord. Stress comes, and we're just fighting traffic, and we're trying to keep up, and we're trying to fill out our lists and make it a happy season. And Lord, it's so easy to lose it in all of that. Jesus, would, we, would you help us that we would set our minds on you, be a people that are set and focused on you above all things, Lord, because you're the giver of life and hope. You have the words of life. And so we thank you for it, God. We thank you for the word this morning. Thank you for this ministry. Thank you for this church. Jesus, what a blessing and gift. I speak your blessing over the people today. I pray that you would guard over them and their families. Lord, that we would be filled with hope. That you would meet our needs, Lord, whatever needs we have. We look to you with them, and I pray your blessings of provision upon them. In the name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Church, bless you as you go today. Mark and Louise are going to hang out here for ministry If as people are heading out and uh, we're ending. You would like to receive prayer this morning. Anything that you're carrying today, don't take it with you. Mark and Louise would love to, would love to minister to you this morning. Thank you so much, Mark and Louise. God bless you guys.